Hello and welcome back everyone. So major connectors are a very crucial part of the removal partial dentures framework. Because as we know that for having an optimum stability, a denture needs to extend to both sides of the arch. And the component or the part uniting the two halves of the denture is the major connector. And since it is the main bridge between the two halves of the denture, therefore the major connector itself needs to be sufficiently strong and fairly rigid so that it can effectively distribute the forces to both sides of the denture and hence provide the much needed stability and support to the removable partial denture. Now based on their design, there are many different types of mandibular and maxillary major connectors used in their respective mandibular and maxillary partial dentures and today we will be looking into the various types of maxillary major connectors. So there are basically six different types of maxillary major connectors named as the palatal bar, the palatal strap, the anterior posterior palatal bar, the anterior posterior palatal strap, the horseshoe shaped or also known as the U shaped palatal connector and the palatal plate type connector. So let's start first with the palatal bar. So the main difference between a palatal bar and a palatal strap is that the palatal bars are less than 8 mm in width. So anything in the palatal major connector that is less than 8 mm is termed as a bar. So this palatal bar is perhaps a more widely used maxillary major connector. But that is not to say this is the perfect one. In fact, it is one of the worst maxillary major connectors that you can give in the maxillary partial denture design. To be used as a major connector, a single palatal bar needs to be rigid and strong so that it can provide the much needed cross arch stability. And since it is very small, barely 8 mm in width, therefore it needs to have a concentrated amount of bulk. Not only that, because of the small design, it also needs to be centrally placed between the two halves of the denture to provide effective support and cross arch stability. This is easier said than done because mechanically this may sound good but from a patient's point of view this placement is highly objectionable. So in actuality if a partial denture is made with a palatal bar then either the palatal bar is too thin and flexible which heavily compromises its mechanical stability or it is too bulky and objectionable to the patient's tongue. So therefore the decision to use a palatal bar major connector instead of a palatal strap which has a more wider coverage is based on the size of the denture bearing areas that whether a single bar can be rigid enough without putting the added bulk. So due to these reasons it is best to avoid this kind of design. So the next is the palatal strap. So this type of palatal major connector has a single broad palatal strap design. This major connector can be made strong and rigid without adding too much of the bulk that will become objectionable to the patient's tongue. So the palatal strap has an anterior border and a posterior border. So when placed, the anterior border of the palatal strap must follow the depressions of the rugae as nearly as possible at the right angles to the median palatal suture. This placement and design will avoid irritation to the patient's tongue. Similarly, the posterior border must also be at right angles to the median palatal suture. So this is a very common design feature for all maxillary major connectors to be at right angles to the median palatal suture line because this avoids the unwanted pressure on the suture hence becoming less irritating for the patient's use. So back to the palatal strap. So as I've already mentioned, the strap needs to be at least 8 mm in width or it should be of at least the combined width of maxillary premolars and the first molar. It should also be confined within an area bounded by four principal rests. So these rests essentially provide the resistance to rotational or torquing forces that might occur due to the major connector. These types of rests are important for any type of major connector that makes contact with the tooth as to prevent slippage, torquing or even orthodontic movement of the abutment teeth. The palatal strap should also follow the natural curvature of the palate or of the maxillary arch so that it does not rotate or irritate the gums or the palate. 
So the most common use of the palatal strap major connector is when the prosthesis has a bilateral tooth supported edentulous area and especially if the edentulous area is of a short span but it should be with a tooth supported restoration. It can also be used for a unilateral tooth supported edentulous area and the best example of a tooth supported unilateral area is a Kennedy's class 3 situation in which there is a unilateral edentulous area that has a natural teeth present anterior and posterior to it. So palatal strap can be used effectively for edentulous areas having Kennedy's class 3 situations. But the palatal strap major connector should not be used with distal extension bases or in other words those that are tooth tissue supported or entirely tissue supported that require anterior replacement because if the palatal strap is placed anteriorly with a distal extension base it will just end up producing torque and may cause leverage and unwanted movement of the denture that we always want to avoid as much as possible and in order to avoid this torquing effect in a distal extension base the single palatal strap needs to be fabricated very bulky and when this much amount of bulk is placed anteriorly it becomes very troublesome for the patient interfering in their speech so it is best to avoid this kind of major connector for distal extension basis however it is strongly advocated for short span tooth supported edentulous areas such as those that occur in Kennedy's class 3. So the next is the anterior posterior palatal bar. So here is an image where you can see what an anterior posterior palatal bar looks like. So technically speaking this kind of major connector has two bars one anterior and one posterior. So this kind of design may seem structurally sound but unfortunately it carries the same disadvantages as a single palatal bar. To be structurally strong and in order to provide stability the anterior and posterior bar needs to be very bulky which would then interfere with the patient's tongue as already discussed in detail in the palatal bar. So there is nothing much to discuss over here. So the next is the anterior posterior palatal strap. So this is a structurally rigid type of major connector and can be used in almost any kind of maxillary partial denture design. It contains four crucial parts in its design. The anterior strap, the posterior strap and the two longitudinal connectors connecting the two straps. And all of these together form a rectangular or a square shaped design. So the two anterior and posterior straps should be of at least 8 to 10 mm in width just like the single palatal strap. So the posterior strap should be located as far posteriorly as possible to avoid interference with the patient's tongue but it should also be anterior to the junction of the soft and hard palate meaning it should be entirely on the hard palate which is the non movable part of the palate. The anterior strap may extend anteriorly to support the anterior teeth. But the anterior step should not be placed ahead of the anterior rest, meaning that it should be behind the anterior most rests. This will provide the maximum support and stability to the denture. Therefore, it should always be tried to place as posteriorly as possible at the rugae crests. The anterior border should also follow the valleys of the rugae just like in the palatal strap. So the lateral strap should be narrow each being at least 7 to 9 millimeters and should be parallel to the curve of the arch. So the lateral straps are those components that provide the actual strength to this design of the major connector because both the lateral strap provide resistance against possible torque and hence flexure is almost non-existent in this kind of major connector design. Now with all the straps, the anterior strap, the posterior strap and the two lateral straps, there are two things in common. One being that they should be at right angles to the medium palatal suture and they should be at least 6 mm away from the gingival surfaces of the teeth. So both of these factors provide maximum patient comfort and minimum irritation to the soft tissues and therefore as already discussed these two design features are very common in almost all maxillary major connector designs. So as I've already said the anterior posterior palatal strap can be used in virtually any kind of maxillary partial denture design. It is an excellent option to be used in Kennedy's class 2 and 4 arches especially in the long span cases of the class 2 modification 1 arches. Apart from that they can also be used in class 1 arches and the possibilities are virtually limitless. The only condition that actually limits their use is perhaps an inoperable maxillary tori that extends to the posterior junction of the hard and soft palate. 
because if the tori is limited to the anterior region the anterior bar can be made in a u shaped connector encircling the tori but if the tori extends to the junction of the hard and soft palate then the use of this kind of major connector becomes very limited Large inoperable tori gives indication to the next major connector which is the U shaped palatal major connector. The only indication of this major connector is when there is a large inoperable tori that extends to the posterior limit of the hard palate. It is also one of the least favorable types of major connector because of three main reasons. The first main point is that it lacks the much needed rigidity that a major connector should have because it has a tendency to allow some degree of flexure under occlusal roads that may induce torque or direct the lateral forces to the abutment teeth which can also be harmful to the denture itself. Secondly, it does not provide good support characteristics and due to the flexure in its design it may allow impingement of the soft tissues when subjected to the functional loading which can severely irritate the soft tissues. And finally if the bulk is added to enhance the rigidity of the u-shaped major connector then it can act as a hindrance to the patient's tongue and the patient's comfort will be compromised So in conclusion the primary reason for the failure of the u-shaped major connector is the flexibility in its design because we all know that in order to function effectively the major connector needs to be very rigid and strong The flexibility of this U-shaped major connector is specially evident in distal extension bases where the edentulous area is behind the remaining natural teeth and has no tooth support. So the movement of the denture over there is very noticeable and very traumatic to the residual bridge. And if we want to make it less flexible then we need to add additional bulk to the major connector which will then prove to be a hindrance to the tongue especially in the rugae area where the tongue naturally needs to be free. by providing it with definitive rest both anteriorly and posteriorly at the same time keeping it well away from the gingival tissues the major connector can be made somewhat acceptable so proper selection of the case and careful contouring and designing is very crucial to the success of the u shaped palatal major connector So in the end we have the palatal plate type major connector. So the palatal plate type major connector is the name that is given to the major connector that has a broad palatal coverage that covers at least one half or more of the hard palate. So the main advantage with this plate type connector is that it offers a more broad coverage on the hard palate. The plate of this major connector lies on the immobile hard palate and also has a total contact with the hard and soft tissues and hence provides excellent tooth support. Adding to that it also has a flat plate design that helps in making a uniform thin plate that can accurately follow the anatomic contours of the hard palate. These design characteristics provide several advantages of this major connector. First, the thin metallic design and the intimate tissue contact of this major connector with the hard palate results in producing a good degree of thermal conductivity of the metal to the underlying tissues, which makes the major connector more acceptable to the tongue and hence increases the patient compliance. Also the anatomic replica of the plate adds strength to the casting and therefore a thin metal with adequate rigidity can easily be fabricated so the problem of bulky rigid connector is reduced and finally since this major connector is more of an anatomic replica therefore it has a precise intimate tissue contact and thus provides a much superior retention Although the primary retention of the denture comes from the denture base itself the plate can provide some sort of indirect retention especially in the tissue supported prosthesis So there are three ways to use a palatal plate first is to use a plate that covers the area between two or more wide edentulous ridges Secondly it can be used as a complete palatal or partial palatal plate that extends right up to the junction of the hard and soft palate and hence it covers the entire hard palate And finally it can also be used in the form of an anterior palatal connector made up of cast metal while covered posteriorly by a denture base So both of the last two designs can be regarded as a form of complete palatal coverage since they cover the entire hard palate. 
So the major indication of these kind of complete palatal coverage design is with the class 1 arches, especially if these class 1 arches are combined by excessive vertical resorption of the remaining ridge, which in turn produces a general poor abutment support and therefore direct retention is difficult to obtain with only the help of abutment teeth. So a complete palatal plate in these cases provides a good degree of support and retention to the denture while still preserving the health of the natural tissues. It can also be used in class 2 cases having a posterior modification area and also some missing teeth anteriorly. Then complete palatal coverage in these cases can provide a good support and stability to the prosthesis. So like I have already said, the complete palatal coverage can be done in either of the two mentioned ways. Either using a cast metal plate to cover the entire hard palate or with a cast metal plate anteriorly with an acrylic plate extending posteriorly. Among these two choices, the complete cast metal coverage is preferred option despite its increased cost because it offers good longevity. But nonetheless, the later method of using half metal plate and half acrylic plate can also be used with a high degree of satisfaction while still reducing the overall cost of the denture. So both of these designs contact all or almost all of the teeth present in the arch and hence definitive rest as always are required whenever the portion of metal contact the teeth. So this was a lecture in which we briefly discuss about the different types of maxillary major connectors, their designs, their indications and also their contraindications. So I hope you like this video. Please take care of yourselves and I will see you people next time. Goodbye.